Good morning. Thank you for being with us. It's so fun to be here going beyond the book with Lori Gelman this morning. Lori comes to us from New York. She was born in Canada. She worked 25 years in radio and TV and then left all that to raise her two beautiful daughters. One is a sophomore in high school and the other is a freshman at USC. I do I do so she's far from her daughter. She's glad to be here this week, right? I'm so glad. I'm getting actually have lunch with her today. <laughs> so Lori, tell us what initially inspired the book. Um, I was a class mom for five soul-sucking years. And um, it was all good until it wasn't. And actually, if you've read the first book, or even if you haven't, I write these very acerbic emails. I did that personally, Lori Galman, to my classes. And for four years, people loved it. They loved the snark, they loved that I would take something as silly as like, and, you know, what we need to do for the class Christmas party, and I would say, you know, you'd have to sing this to the tune of Santa Claus is Coming to Town in order to understand why it's written this way. So um, I got a lot of great feedback, and, in, and after two years for each child, I was like, I'm done, thank you very much, I love you all. And they said they wanted me to come back for the fifth year, and I was like, I really can't. It's just too much. And they said, No, but everybody loves you as class mom. You're the greatest class mom. And I said, Okay, I will, because. And uh, I said yes. I wrote my first, as per usual, email that launches my presence with authority. I think it started, Dear Losers. Uh, and it, if you read the next line, I don't think people read the next line because. Someone got really offended by that. The next line said, and the reason I call you losers is because I'm the winner. I get to be class mom again. Um, so one person had never had me as class mom, did not understand my sense of humor, and went right to the head of the school, not even the PTA, just the head of the school, and said, I'm so offended by the way this woman speaks to, to uh, us, we as parents, and I insist that she be fired immediately. <laughs> Fired. And, and then did she step up to take your job? Yeah, no, no, she, no, she did not. Actually. She left altogether. Yeah, right? a year later. So yeah, they, I, so they called me and they said, you know, Lori, I'm really sorry. Um, we're going to have to ask you to step down as class mom. And I said, well, don't you want me to just tone down the emails? And she said, oh, would you do that? And I said, no, I will not. I quit. And so that was that was, and I was very hurt because I put a lot into a lot of effort into being the class mom and making it fun not only for myself but for everybody else and just trying to get people to participate so that if they see the class mom, it, that it's an email from the class mom, they're not like, oh, delete. They, they actually read it because they think they're going to get a laugh out of it. Um, and it, it actually worked. So I was really proud of that. And when somebody fired me for it, I was so upset. And it took two books, but I'm, a, I'm better now. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> So the writing was therapeutic for it you. It was very therapeutic. And not to say that these books are autobiographical, because they're, they're really not. It takes place in Kansas City, and uh, this woman is completely different from me. But the, the, the essence is there, the essence of what a, what a trying, soul-sucking, pride-swallowing, whatever I've said before about this job it is. And not that you shouldn't do it, but if you're going to do it, let's all like have a sense of humor about it, because... Why well, not? and you really did have a sense of humor about it. You, all these emails, you would do contests. Like, who's yeah. going to respond first? You <laughs> really did in your real life. Yes, I did. Well, in my real life, I would always say at the very bottom, response times will be noted. And then in the next email, I'd say, good for, I'm giving you all my jokes from the first book, but it was like, <laughs> you know, uh, I forget the character's name, out of office reply was number one in, in, in 11 seconds. Congratulations. The net, you know. And then at the end of the year, I would give uh, Starbucks gift cards for you know, who, who sent me the funniest note back, whose response times were the quickest, who you know, embodied the, the, the soul of a class mom without actually being class mom. And, and that's how I made it fun for everybody. And, and the fact that I got fired because one person didn't like it, I'm fine. I'm totally over it. But... I mean, it just still chaps my ass. <laughs> well, and so what did the PA, the, it, on the East Coast they call it PA, PA but the PTA yeah. is how we know it. What did the PTA gift you with this year on the first day of school? Safety patrol. <laughs> on the first day. It's true. It's, lest you think I just write about it, I'm actually, I do it. <laughs> and as a, little, as a little Dalton FU, I think, there was like, oh, who's going to do the first day of safety patrol? Lori Gelman. So I was out there in the red, the orange vest and, you know, the, with my walkie-talkie first day. I know you guys probably, do you have that here? Yeah. Safety yeah. patrol? Yeah. Some schools do. It's the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, and I love the story about your husband. So Lori's husband is Michael Gilman, the executive producer of Live with Kelly and Ryan, and he sometimes does safety patrol. Oh my God! What happened, yeah, Michael? There? Well, we've got you have to do it every year. It's it's mandatory. It is a command performance at the school I go to that you have to. You cannot send your nanny. You cannot send your older child. You have to show up one of the parents. And so there were three times in twelve years that I actually was physically not able to be there. So my husband had to go. Which is it's fine, and he didn't mind, except you know he has his nice you know suit on, and then he puts the orange vest over top of it, and he's got the walkie-talkie. And he came home the first day, and he said, "I never knew how many homeless people watch my show." Because apparently, <laughs> that's people like, "Hey, Gilman, is that you?" And then he's like giving directions to the mat, and like the Starbucks is over there, and Staples is across the street and down. You know, it was just really funny. Like those are the most important things you ever do on safety. I mean, I know it's important to do it, and just the presence of somebody in an orange vest is supposed to be intimidating. Um, but keep everyone safe. I, the only thing I ever did of any worth on safety patrol was I saw two sixth graders making out at the bus stop, and I, I, I went up and I took a picture. I went, hey! And I took a picture of them, and they were like, ah! <laughs> Don't tell my mom! That was the only good thing I ever did in 12 years. Oh, so are you a, room, a class mom this year? What's your big um, volunteer job this year? This year, so far, nothing. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, the sun is high, I'm moving on. You know, that, that, I just had one graduate, the other one's in 10th grade. It's like, let the, let the young mothers do it. You know, they, they don't need me anymore as much. So are parents begging you to come back because they want those contests and they, all the well, everybody, Well, they can read the book now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they, um, yeah, no, they, 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 I wasn't so great. Were you ever, <laughs> no one's asking me back. While you were writing these books, were you ever worried that people you might be outing or talking about would know who they were? No, because I, I really, I truly took it from my crazy, crazy imagination. I mean, the situation is she's a class mom trying to make it fun for everybody. Everything else in the book is, is, is truly not. I, I really somewhat. didn't base it on anybody else, although it doesn't stop people from constantly coming up to me and asking me if they're Jen. It's like, no, you're not freaking Jen. I'm Jen. It's like, I'm the victim. You're all the babies. <laughs> like, you're Jen. No. But, yeah. Well, and in the second book, You've Been Volunteered, it took you a much shorter time to write this book than the first book. Talk yeah. about the writing process. Well, the first time, I mean, I just decided, I turned 50 and I had a little panic attack and thought, oh, my God, I've got, I really have to do something. I need a third act. So I decided to try writing a book. I, st I started with a children's book. It's a boring story. 47 people rejected it. It was really upsetting, but it was fine. I got past that, too. Um, so then I started writing about being a class mom. And the first 50 pages were great. I was like, boom, boom, boom. This is going to write itself. And then it really slows down after that. So what I, what I figured out in the first book, which took me three years to write, and it took me about two years to figure this out, is that you have to show up every day to write your book. You have to treat it like it's a job. You have to say, okay, for these three hours, I am going to sit down, unplug everything else, and write this book. When I finally decided to start showing up and actually writing for three hours a day, that got the book done, and that was great. So it was really... Um, an eye-opening experience. And the second book took me less than a year because I'd figured out the secret of writing, which is you have to sit down and write. You can't just like say you're writing a book and you know once in a while sit down and type a few memos. You know, it doesn't work that way. How did you know how how long to make it? How well, did you know when it was the end? You know what? I didn't. I had no idea. I mean, I was a really stupid new guy. I had been a journalist for 25 years. I'd only ever written just the facts, ma'am. So writing fiction was uh, you know, it's like being a kid in a candy store because I didn't have to rely on facts anymore. I could just go with what, what my imagination was telling me. Um, but I only knew when I started that it was going to start in September and it was going to end in June because that's the school year. And I knew I'd have to hit um, Halloween and Thanksgiving and, and Christmas and Valentine's Day, all the, all the little things you mark at school with parties or whatever in the classroom. And, and that was pretty much it. And I just went through the school year. It ended up uh, the first draft was 350 pages, which is exactly what you want a book to be. I couldn't believe it. I was like, boy, that was lucky. <laughs> wow. And then for the second book, the first book by, the, by page 50, I was in November. And in the second book, when I was looking back, uh, by page 50, I was still like in September. So I'm like, oh, okay, I better start with, like moving this story along. 
But I would say that's because the first book, for those of you who maybe haven't read it, is more about being the class mom and all of the different moms and dads you meet. Yeah, all in the, the personalities class, you all meet. All the personalities. And, yeah. But where the second book is more about Jen Dixon. Mm -hmm. I was going to say you. No, it's not me. But Jen Dixon and her life and her family relationships and her elderly parents and helping with them and the two older daughters. And so it just goes much deeper. And I think it helps. I mean, both of them are amazing, but coming from different sort of. Yeah, I think it, it had to, you know, she had to evolve because yeah. like the first one was all about being the class mom. But I mean, we all evolve. Nobody stays in one place, especially three years later, which is the, se the second book takes place three years later. So, yeah, everybody's older. Everybody's, she's now in the sandwich generation. Her, she's aging parents and little kids. So she's, you know, really squeezed with that. Her husband's having trouble at work. I just felt it was important that everybody's life move on. And I've set it up beautifully for the third book. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> Because um, things happen at the end of the book that, that I've literally had people come up and say, I can't wait for the third one. I need to see, <laughs> for those of you who haven't read it yet. And the third book is going to center around? Um, being the chair of the benefit committee. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the response every time. <laughs> Everybody knows what that's like, no matter how involved Can you I are. Can I just say that is a universal, like, I, I want to say something rude, but I'm not going to. A universal kick in the pants. Like, if you've ever done it, yeah. it's the worst job. I should have started with that instead of class mom. I don't know what I was thinking with this <laughs> class mom stuff. It was easy. Yeah, that was, that was a shocker, what, an eye-opening shocker. And I can't even write half the things that happened to me because <laughs> they're just so awful. <laughs> so, Cam, I'm over it now. <laughs> So when you were the head of the parent party, what was your most enlightening experience in your real life? Uh, for the benefit committee? Yeah. Well, there's, there's a couple I really, really can't talk about because they're just too shocking. But um, the one I, did, I do remember is the day we were setting up, it was, we have a big auction at, at my school. And so we were setting up the day of the auction and you know, we needed volunteers and everyone's like, yes, I'll come, I'll come. So you know, I was like, oh my God, we got 30 women coming to, to help set up our 700 items. I mean, it was a big auction. And they come and they don't do anything. I couldn't believe it. It's like, what are you doing? There's like, and they're just standing around. Everyone was around the David Roth um, exhibit. He was like, he was a parent at school. Peter David Roth, something like that. Peter Thomas Roth. Tom, Peter Thomas Roth. Sorry, he's a parent at the school. Whatever. Um, but he donated like a ton of, of beauty products for for auction, and they're all just standing around that literally for two hours, and I'm like heaving tables and put, and I don't have, but unfortunately, Jen Dixon would, but I do not have the guts to stand up and say, get your bloody asses in gear, please. This is what we're here for. And there was literally four women doing the work of 50, and the rest of them were, you know, drinking coffee and having fun, and I didn't, I, I didn't under, I didn't expect that, and I didn't understand how they could rationalize that in their own heads. And, and then, and then leave and go, helps. oh, I was just setting up for the benefit of it. <laughs> <laughs> Which you know they did. You went, you know they went home and did that. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Well, please, stand in line. <laughs> right, and so the books are um, set in Kansas City. They are. And talk about why they were set in Kansas City and what the people of Kansas City think. <laughs> so I set it in Kansas City because I thought, it's not an L.A. problem, it's not a New York problem. I'm tired of the Upper East Side of New York mother stories and the, and the you know, L.A. mom stories. So I thought if I put it in the middle of the country... Really, it, it is an everybody problem, so it, it'll just sort of bleed out and everybody will sort of be able to relate to it in one way or another. And they did. And they, when, I, when I toured for the first book, they were like, oh my gosh, this is, it's everywhere. And everybody has a story that they want to tell you about what happened to them when they were class moms. <laughs> I have a million of them in my head. And uh, except Kansas City. Kansas City was not pleased that... And, and I never said this, but they were like, we are not every town America. How dare you call us every town America? I'm like, I didn't call you every town America. I just put the book there, and I said it was because people could relate. But they were really, we are a distinct city. And I mean, there's, they, I got a lot of blowback from Kansas City. <laughs> like, I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, like, did I not even do it with this one? I'm, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> OK, well, changing it up, I want to talk about 
the, your husband, and in the books, the husband-wife relationship is mm. really great. Right. And your publisher, somebody tried to tell you that it shouldn't be so great and that you should change that part and they should have a little more drama. Well, and I actually <laughs> did have to change it. When they originally said, we're interested in this book, they, they said, would you be interested in changing it? And I said, yes, I will change whatever part of it you want. She can become a stripper. I don't care. <laughs> like, I, like, whatever you need. And they said, we love the story, but her, her marriage is too happy. So we want you to put in an entire plot line where her marriage is put in, not peril, but in question and like something happens. And I was, I remember sitting at a table at a restaurant with my editor and like four other junior mm -hmm. editors from the, the book punk company. And I said, why would I do that? And they said, her marriage is too happy. And I said, well, <laughs> my marriage is happy. Like, and to the one, they were like, no. Yeah, no one, no one believes a happy marriage, and I thought that was so sad. I was like, "Wow." Yeah. Um, so they, and I, if anybody's read Class Mom, I had to put it the an entire plot line that was um, such a fox, the the, the trainer. The, the, no, no, such a fox isn't the trainer. The oh, high the school. high school guy. Yeah, yes, whatever. yes. But yes. anyway, that was the one of the hardest things. That took me four months because that was one of the hardest things to do is to seamlessly put in another character and plot line throughout the whole book. But I did it. <laughs> and um, and it worked. So yeah, it actually did. That is such a good question. And I, I resented it, and I re I uh, you know fought against it. And when I put it in, absolutely, it made it a much better book, more compelling, more interesting. Uh, and it added another dimension to the character, which I sorely needed. You know, she can't just be the class mom. She has to have a goal, and she has to have drama and, and other things happening in her life. And, and you know, something I learned from writing the first book. All right. Well, thank you all so much for thank being you. here. Yeah. Lori, thank you for being with oh, us today. Oh, my pleasure. You're this was leaving, so fun. Headed back to New York. But really quick, in case you haven't read the books, I want to quote what Kelly Ripa says about you. Something tells me that Lori Gilman has been volunteered many, many times. This is a must read and a love letter to all those underappreciated multitaskers who just want to be left alone. But you don't really want to be left alone. <laughs> yes, right? we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you.